Hola amigos, que tal? It's Mike from Living Walks and we are here in Tenerife and we're in the stunning city of Puerto de la Cruz. Now I have to say, if your experience of Tenerife has only ever been Los Cristianos or Playa de las Americas, you are doing yourself a disservice. Absolutely. I want to show you what you're missing. I want to show you the city of Puerto de la Cruz. I'll show you why you should come here at least for a day. So stay with us. I think you're really going to like this. So there's a little map of the Canary Islands just over here. And Tenerife is the red one, about a third of the way across. And as we pause here a moment, let's just take a moment. Let's have a little group hug. Now, come on, a little bit closer. That's nice. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Good. Nice to welcome you on board. Another walk around another amazing city. So this has lots of contrast. We're going to see uh, surfing beaches. We're going to see architecture, history. We're going to see, hopefully, wild, impressive waves on the seafront. We're going to see great places to eat. Might hear a little bit of music. Got something for everybody. Stay with us all the way to the end. Because you don't know what you're going to miss. So Puerto de la Cruz is on the north side of the island. And so traditionally you would think, okay, it gets uh, just a little cooler, perhaps in the south. It's a little bit more rain. But on the other hand, that is why it is just so lush and green. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little while. Let's just pop around here for a moment. Beautiful little square. So people are just coming out to have lunch. It's getting close to one o'clock. We are Sunday the 18th. Now it's not June or July, no, this is December. It's 24 degrees. You see why this is popular this time of year. Have a look at the uh, lovely balconies, the little woodwork typical Canarian style. Doesn't matter if you're into balconies or not. You've got to admit, it's quite pretty. I'll take you past this little cafe, the Agora. A little shout out to the Agora. One and I were spending a very delightful hour here, not so long ago. So it would be, be quite nice if just before the cafes uh, opened, we just sat for an hour, wait for things to liven up. I thought as we're sitting for an hour, as you do, let's just talk about our hopes and dreams for the future. Then maybe once we've done that, we could say all the wonderful things that we really admire and like about each other. And so we did that, and it was, it was a beautiful moment, I have to say. And then for the next 57 minutes, uh, we just read up on the walk and uh, some of the things that we'd see. So what are you looking at? Now, I don't mean that in the uh, getting ready for a fight sense. I mean, uh, what are you seeing right now here? So this is the area. The area is called uh, La Rania which is the old fisherman's quarter. This area really comes alive. Uh, restaurants. You might also notice up on the walls around us, street art. And this particular area is full of some really impressive street art. Now I'm aware that some of you out there will have a, perhaps a different opinion about the value of street art in a city. For myself, 
I really like it, particularly when it's done well, when it's been done in coordination with local council, and it's really, in cities that I've seen, like here, like Malaga, like Glasgow, it's really actually worked to prettify certain areas. So blank side of buildings that were just faceless, actually often quite ugly, been transformed into works of art. And places actually where they actually draw you in as a visitor. In my local town, in fact, just this year, we had a street art festival. Some very big names uh, in the art world came and painted on certain designated spots. And I must say, it's been fantastic. Really done wonders for the town. We have talked about it for years, wondered why they wouldn't do it, because it's inexpensive. Look at that one over there. And then also, if beetles aren't your bag, what about up there? Little frog in an amphora uh, with wings. Like I say, places are just starting to open now. It's a Sunday. Notice too, just the colors of all the buildings, the colorful doors. So this town, if you haven't visited, is very easy on the eye. It's, I have to say, it's my favorite city or town on the island. Again, lots of canary and balconies. Gonna see lots of balconies today, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Because the place is full of them. So Porto La Cruz then. So I say, it's can be a little cooler than Los Cristianos, uh, de las Americas, and that really works in its favor. Because if you're down south, Maybe you get a little bit tired of the heat or the dryness or the lack of greenery. Then hop on a bus. It takes about 45, 50 minutes to get up here. It's not very expensive. And just spend the day here. It's cooler. It's so green. You can see the mountains up behind me. They're all green. There's some great hikes to go on from here. You can walk up through banana plantations. There's a particularly nice one you can do just along the front. It takes you up through banana plantations. You come out on a, on a little cafe that's got a panoramic view. And then you can just work your way up to the main road above. You can get a, get a bus back. If you like golf, just a few minutes from here, you can go and play golf. A run of golf surrounded by banana trees. It's something you're probably not going to see on the south coast. Likewise too, being based here is great. Because if you do find a day that's a bit drizzly, and we have done before, you just jump on a bus. Take the bus down to Los Cristianos or somewhere like that. Costa Radeji. Hey presto, you're almost guaranteed some warmth on you, some heat. Well, right now, what are we on? This is the 18th, and it's 24 degrees. Pop 
popular place to come and have a swim. On the pier, the jetty. Beaches here are black sands. head up into the main square just show you that you're not short of places to eat and drink so in this whole area there's at least 300 restaurants and cafes so no matter how picky you are I think you're gonna find something and at the risk of sounding like I'm trying to sell you this uh, I'm not getting a commission for this So we're heading into the sun. Let's see if we can get us out of the sun. Even here, you see how green it is? Palm trees, dragon trees. If you want to come here from the airport, and I'm guessing, uh, well, there's two airports. There's the north one, which is the nearest here. But generally, if probably coming from the UK, uh, you're going to come to the south airport. There's a number of ways you can get here. You can get on a shuttle, you can take a taxi. To be honest, the cheapest way is to simply use the local bus. Tisa bus. It's about 15 euros. Take you about an hour. And then you're here. Look at this. So there are a number of differences between Puerto de la Cruz and the towns down south. First of all, this is much more Spanish in feel. Puerto de Cruz was the first resort on the island, would you believe? And it's certainly the largest one on the north side. This is quite pretty, isn't it? Cafe. This is very Spanish, as I say, a lot of uh, mainland Spanish come here. Obviously, in winter time, you're getting away from the cold of the mainland. And then in summer, if you've ever been to Madrid, in summer you know how warm that gets.
and so it has a, a very pleasant feel. Feels a little mo more like, you know, you are actually in another country. But lots of English spoken here, lots of German too. A lot of uh, German and Scandinavian tourists come here. Uh, stay with us while we go up here. I just want to show you something and then we'll head back to the main sites. So, in our travels over 30 odd years, sometimes notice a little pattern. So, we Brits are very good at finding the hottest, sunniest, and often driest places. And that's where we'll hang our hat, that's where we'll holiday. The Scandinavians, and sometimes the Germans, seem to have a knack for finding the places that are actually really pleasant to live. And that's no different here. Puerto de la Cruz is It's a lovely city and a great place to live. So, unfortunately now, the sun is in completely the wrong position. I I wanted to show you, but we'll have a go anyway. Again, I just wanted to show you the street. And the balconies up and down the street. Really charming again. A number of these are going to be guest houses. Really quite lovely. I'll just move you over here out of the sun. There we are. Again, you can see balconies galore. Let's head back to the main action. Oh, and two, right, let's go this way. We've got the sun at our backs. So this is, I would say, a, a really good mixture. Of sort of cosmopolitan city, but it's got old colonial charm. probably why over the years again we found ourselves coming back to Puerto de la Cruz So the town really was, uh, it was originally a port for the nearby and wealthy town of La Orotava. It was just a little bit up the hill. That's about a 30 minute bus trip. That's worth, uh, that's worth seeing. We've got a little uh, video we've just done. It may or may not be up to watch when you see this. Look out for it, very attractive. It's particularly known for all this couple of big, uh, big gardens that are free entry and they really are really quite spectacular. I wouldn't particularly say I'm into gardens but you have to appreciate nice architecture and greenery. And there's the, um, the House of the Balconies which is very famous too. House of the Balconies again featuring some of these little wooden beasties. But overall too, it's quite nice up there. It's a little cooler. And you often find that uh, Lower Otava is gonna be a stopping point anyway, uh, if you're off around the islands on different bus trips.
No. Possibly some sort of pub crawl, but I think actually we're seeing a lot of uh, musical instruments here. Maybe they'll be playing later. So tourism here really boomed in the 1950s, so it really took off. And I guess we could agree that it's been going like the clappers ever since. Oh, on that building ahead of us, you know, the big yellow one. I don't know if you can see, just above that first sort of beige parasol, it looks like a little Father Christmas hanging from the balcony. So that's a tradition. Tradition here, you see that in Portugal too. It's Santa Claus not clinging on for dear life, but trying to climb up the building to get into the chimney. It's a reconstruction of an American Jeep. Uh, it's made out of compressed toilet tissue, uh, clean, unused. Um, it's very realistic, I like the shine on it. You're not allowed to touch it, of course, and they can't bring it out when it's raining. Quite impressive, though. All the work of one man. Some might say, a mad man. I don't know. I think he was just hmm, concentrated. Let's wander along here. So the statue here is famous. It's the statue of the official woman. Look up in her basket. Octopus. Got some fish. Fish falling out of the pail behind her. It looks really old, but it isn't. It goes back to only uh, 2008. Julio Nieto was the artist. And it was built, commissioned by the Lions Club of Puerto de la Cruz. In the background, uh, you've got fun fair, by the way, here. So if you come here with the kids, uh, Christmas time there's always a fun fair here. When we come here in the evening, we've got three camels here. Three camels linked to the three kings, and they're all lit up. In fact, we've got another video, probably already up, you can have a look. That will have them in all their shiny glory. If you've been spending your time down south, if you've been sitting in the sun so long, your skin is now hanging off in flaky sheets, then get yourself up here. Well, the air is cool. It's relaxed. It's green. Come to somewhere where you can actually sit outside in the sun and not burn your face off. Come on up. Puerto de la Cruz.
As you'll know, if I go quiet now and again, it's due to copyright reasons. We've got music in the streets. Don't really want to get flagged up. Look at some lovely watery goodness. Look at that blue water. Even from here, you can see the power of the waves hammering away to it. This is the North Atlantic Ocean. So today is probably going to be fairly still. But most days you come down here and the waves are just battering against the rocks. Which are going to get a little closer. We're going to be heading that way. And stay with us because we're going to head to probably the best, best view of the, the city. We're just going to be a little bit up there, just behind some of those buildings there. We're going to be looking down on the glistening bay and the whole glory that is Puerto de la Cruz. Coming back to head down to the left, some rather spectacular views. I want to take you down into this historic area here first. We've got the cathedral, We've got some great cafes around here. And some of the buildings down here on the right were the first hotels on this part of the island. Follow this street down, you come back into that big square again where there was a little park, where there's all the palm trees, and where there was all the cafes. Now we're going to just walk around this square for a moment. This, I believe, is that the Marquesa Hotel? Yeah, we have stayed there once. You 
needs to hear the bird song. See the vibrant greenery. So again, this is it's a real charm of the city. Again, if you've just flaked out down south, if you're parched, it's too dry, too sandy, get yourself up here for a day. Check the weather forecast before you come. Again, as I say, it's uh, it's a little bit more changeable than it is down south. You just want to make sure you're not heading into any rain. But it doesn't rain anywhere near as much as uh, you think it might. This is a cosy little corner around here. With a nice little cafe. Very welcoming. And we're going to take this route back down. Let's continue our walk. Can you picture yourself sitting here with a glass of wine? Yeah, I sound a little bit like those uh, presenters on uh, Home in the Sun. It's a little bit of a sales technique, isn't it, really? Can you picture yourself sitting here having a glass of wine in the cafe that's only open for three hours a week? What would you drink, red or white? Hmm. And of course you picture yourself there it's all part of the sales but i think to be fair home in the sun does capture people's imagination and in a way they do something that i suppose we're doing too we are Hoping to show people that there's different places in the world to travel to. Doesn't have to be expensive. There are places that they might not have thought about. And perhaps, you know, if we step out of our comfort zone. Maybe try something that we think is like, well, no, that's not for us. I wouldn't like that sort of place. We often find we're pleasantly surprised. Well, at least I do. Seems pretty calm today. Often. See the white building over there? A little fence underneath it. Often you get the spray hitting that fence. Check out our evening walk here. I think it was a bit more uh, a bit more blustery then. Waves are a little bit more impressive. Now this is a uh, Pretty nice little promenade, isn't it? So they've recently done this area up below, cafe area. I say recently, I think the last time we were here was probably six years ago. Partly due to COVID, partly just because we were spending time in good old Madeira. We'll find around here again because there's uh, more German tourists. But more places will have German cakes on offer, German breads. Do try them if you haven't. German black bread, fantastic. So 
So all these islands in the Canaries uh, are volcanic. In fact, Tenerife and La Palma are the most volcanic. You might have guessed that because obviously recently, last year, La Palma, probably the longest eruption ever recorded uh, in the area, 85 days. Check out our La Palma video. It's incredibly sexy. And I know some of you like to ask, what am I wearing today? I'm not really sure about the fascination, I'm happy to say. So the top is fluorescent, nice fluorescent yellow, got the arms cut off just to show my, my tattoos. Trouser wise, I've just got some uh, tight, tight blue speedos. I do have some shoes on today though, but the uh, heels are a little high. It's quite difficult to walk. Uh, so hopefully we got these stairs. So I won't totter and trip. Please have it with ankles, you know. street parallel to this behind us here if you do fancy a bit more of a an English pub style evening uh, you've got places behind there you can drink but do try along the front it's particularly pleasing especially in the evening Hermitage, some Tolomo. Of course, you knew that, didn't you? There's a little roundabout here, and it's got big McDonald's on it. But there's also a big bus stop here, it says Loro Park on it so this also is where you can pick up the free little train the electric train that'll take you to Laurel Park which is not very far so of course in actual fact you may well have been to this town if you've been to Laurel Park then you've also been to Playa de la Cruz I might show you later probably another video it's just down the road uh, it's very walkable from here just at the other end of the beach, uh, Playa Jardin or uh, Garden Beach, it's that area. If you head down there, have a swim, dry off and you're about 10 minutes walk away from Laura Park. And Laura Park, if you don't know what that means, uh, Loro means parrot, park means park. So it's a big zoo. Started off uh, just as a parrot park really and it's grown over the years and now they have all manner of beasties there lions tigers all that sort of stuff they've got orcas killer whales i'm not particularly one for zoos but if you're going to do a zoo make the enclosures large make them as close to the animals natural habitats as possible and i think laura park do a good job of it also i have to say the landscaping is fantastic it's again it's lush and green so if you have been down south and you want to cool off lovely place to come adult tickets um 40 euros uh, children are 28 euros not children but children's tickets i think you knew what i meant didn't you if you come along here at night 
Lots of cakes are on offer, and you tend to have a, a pianist or a musician. Let me just look over the top here. What do we have here? So, we have a, a Lido complex, or a Lake complex. Logo Marchenez. Now it was designed by actually probably one of my favorite artists, Cesar Manrique. Now, the name may not mean anything to you, and maybe you're not into art, that really doesn't matter. If you want to see why I like him so much, if you check out our channel, and you just type in Lanzarote, and then we've got lots of walks around some of the buildings that he built and designed. So, for me, one, he was a great artist anyway, in his own right, but two great things that he did really stand out first then is that he saw how a lot of the spanish coastline had been affected shall we say by huge high rises big concrete buildings all along the front and he wanted to make sure that that didn't happen to lanzarote so we got to work with the council and they agreed that there'll be no building higher than a palm tree. Yes, of course, there was a big rush to try and engineer very, very tall palm trees. That's uh, right, that didn't work out very well, but, but it seems to have worked, even to this day. And also, he wants to make sure that, see, the local color was white. So you can see here, all the concrete is painted white. So all the buildings would be white. And that works remarkably well because it's a sort of volcanic landscape. So you've got black rock. I see over here those big stones over there, volcanic rock. And against the white, they look particularly nice. So the second thing then he did was the buildings that he designed. And some of them he lived in. Some of them were, uh, were for other purposes. One. Uh, it was Lagomar. If you look for Lagomar on our channel, it, on first glance, looks like some some hideaway for some Bond villain. Absolutely stunning. So it's built into the rock, so it uses whatever shapes were actually there. And then, just as you see here, all the curving kind of concrete, imagine that like 10 times over. Pretty really fanciful shapes, merged with white concrete lots of hidden pools so the building famously actually belonged to the egyptian actor omar sharif you've seen dr zhivago then you know who omar sharif is and it didn't unfortunately belong to him very long good reason for that see basically the developer of lagomar decided you know what i'd like to live there I spent so much time working on it, and it really is just one of a kind. I'd like to get it back. Well, he knew that Omar Sharif liked to play cards, he liked to play bridge in particular, and he's very good. He's well known as a bridge player. So, he said, I'll tell you what, let's have a game of bridge. And whoever wins gets Lagomar. Omar Sharif thinking, hey, I'm really good. So, yeah, fine. We didn't realize this developer also was a world-class bridge player. And he beat Omar Sharif. So, and he got back Lagomar. But check it out on our channel. It is absolutely stunning. It's like something out of Star Wars. Really is. And there's other buildings too. So if you look for on our channel, if you find videos on, say, this is our Enrique Foundation again, and it's just a building that I just give my left foot to live in, really. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Doesn't feel like a building at all. 
And what's interesting is that on Lanzarote, like all other volcanic islands, so when you get a lava flow, flows downhill. And what happens as it does, the outside of the lava flow, of course, is in contact with the air, and so it cools down. As it cools down, it hardens, of course. But inside, it's still molten, so it's still moving. So what you end up with is the outside hardens and is still and becomes stone, but the inside keeps moving and eventually disappears and all goes down to the sea or low-lying areas. And what you get is these tunnels then. And over the years, they get covered by volcanic ash, etc. And then occasionally what will happen is some of these tunnels will collapse. And what you get is these giant kind of holes in the ground, like chasms. And the great thing about Cesar Enrique is he's built these natural shapes. He's built on them. He's expanded them out. And so if you do walk around some of the buildings that he's created, they use these natural volcanic hollows in the ground. Absolutely stunning. Again, not like something out of James Bond film. A nice beach here. So this is a surfer's beach. It's a fancy bit of surfing. Get yourself down here. They do surfing lessons, as you'd expect on a surfing beach. You can see some surfers out there now. You can look up there, so you can see all the greenery, see the palm trees, right up to the top, you see greenery. Again, this part of the island, so lush. A little cafe over there, by the way. Set out the shade. Lovely walk up that way again, you can walk up through banana plantations. What we're going to do is we're going to head this way. So we're actually going to head up a bit, so we're going back into town and heading up. You see the buildings up there above us? Okay, there's a whole big chunk of the city just up there. That's where we're heading for the best view in town. Nice and cool here, you've got lots of tree-lined avenues. We're going to head up a little bit further though. So if you come here, of course, it's Spanish territory, so tapas is a big thing. You know, little plates. You can share them. Or you can just hog them all to yourself, which is what I tend to do. Uh, meat, of course, appears quite quite a lot. Although there's not a lot of meat grown on the island, uh, so a lot of it comes from South America. But there's also a good choice if you're veggie, you're vegan. Yep, you know, you can find plenty of stuff to eat. You got some specialities here. You got a nice dessert called the uh, Bien Masabi. Sort of translates as well, it tastes good to me. And it's a mix of honey, sort of almond, cream, eggs, and rum. We've got frangoyas, which is a corn based milk pudding. And generally, you put sort of cinnamon, honey, and brandy on there. Get some particularly nice local goat cheese here. As the name suggests, it comes from goats. So you got a lot of local wine on the island. Uh, I guess the wine has uh, some particular flavour, of course, because of volcanic soil. If you ever take a trip out, you often see vines growing 
And what they'll do is uh, <coughs> they'll shape the volcanic soil around in a protective circle around each around each vine. So it protects them from the winds. A lot of wind here. That's where we're going up there for a spectacular view. So stay with us. take advantage of the shade of those trees over there. Oh, you're naughty. 5129BZS. I'm joking. It's the adverts for Laura Park everywhere. So you see the usual creatures in uh, Laura Park, both aquatic and land-based, and avian too. The name is in Loro, as in parrots. A few that you won't get to see, but I did get to see in a special preview, so these are kept away from the public. So last year, they had a dolphin born with uh, one human-like leg called Harry. I wasn't quite sure what the other leg was called, they wouldn't tell me. Also, they've had some interesting um, breeding experiments going on. So, in breeding the zebra that they've got there, lone zebra uh, with a pipistral bat. I have to say, the result, it's a lovely little chap. Very nice. Uh, they're still, I mean, an ring about officially what they should call it. Should it be a Z-Bat? Or it should be a Bat's Bra? Bat's Bra. Hmm, Z-Bat, I think. It's a few fiestas, I suppose, you might want to be aware of. So here at Christmas time, we've got Three Kings Day. This takes place on the 6th of January. So in Spanish countries, what you'll find these kids don't get all their presents on Christmas Day, they might get one or two. But Three Kings Day is based on the idea that the three kings visited Jesus 12 days after his birth. Which is a little bit late really, isn't it, to be honest. And of course, they brought with them presents. So hence it seems, it seems sensible that that's when you should give children their presents. And so if you find yourself on one of the islands on the 6th, then you can find out where the procession is going to be. There's always a procession. It involves three kings, wise men, and camels. Sometimes there'll be real camels. Sometimes they will be artificial camels. Uh, once, it was two years ago, there was the there was the drought of the camels, uh, quite famous on Tenerife. No camels to be found. All the Pepemashia ones had uh, got wet in the rain. And so what happened is uh, someone had to go out in front of all the uh, processions and hand out children's toy camels. They're only about an inch high to all the 
onlookers. Of course you had to use your imagination, what you needed to do. So I'm just navigating these roads. What you need to do then is uh, when the procession came along, you just needed to hold up the toy camel in front of your eye. And of course adjust the distance, just so it appeared as if it was life size as the procession walked past. Sometimes I love those simple solutions, don't you? If only everything was so simple. Now, I'm going to do a left here. I'm going to head up some steps. These steps are just above the Martinez shopping centre. Well, nice little shops and cafes along here, although actually everything seems to be shut today. Maybe it's siesta time. You appreciate the effort I'm putting into this by the way. There's a lot of stairs. A little mini view. This is nothing compared to what we're about to see. So let's carry on up. Stay with us, particularly if you want to hear about the Festival of the Sardines. You won't believe what they do with sardines. up this way. I'm quite impressed. I've been up here for six years. Interesting to see how and if it's changed. All these names on the steps, recognize them. 
They're all novels by Agatha Christie. So you may think we're out of the city, but actually not so. This area up here, when we're more away from the hotels, and this is where we're going to find apartments. There are lots and lots of apartment complexes up here to, to rent or buy. again because they're often very good at finding good places to hang out good places to live I find a lot of uh, Scandinavians and German tourists up this way pretty nice isn't it and did I say it's at least 24 today I reckon between you and me, could be nudging 25. I did tantalize you, did I not? The promise of talking about the Festival of Sardines. So actually, about six months from now in July, 16th to be precise, there's a festival called the Festival of Water. La Fiesta del Agua, of course, as we all know. The water party. And where copious amounts of water are thrown during the festivities. I think you can imagine what happens when the word party and water are slung together. Before that, there is La Sardina, Sardina, La Sinada, La Sardinada, that's it. La Sardinada. Good, we'll get there. Sorry festival and of course obviously sardines are going to be fried they're also going to be eaten it's a shame to fry up sardines and then not eat them really and people of course get involved in lots of games popular kind of you know sort of walk along the greasy pole a little bit like the climb the greasy pole we have in my hometown A few days before the festival begins, there's a main procession. They wheel out a large paper mache sardine. It's wheeled through the streets, it's brought to the waterfront, and it's blessed with holy water, which to you and me is actually petrol or lighter fluid. It's done by a man dressed as a bishop, and then the sardine is set alight. It's a huge, rapturous applause. And after this is a big firework display and the event is therefore known as the burial of the sardine. It's kind of funny also that there are professional mourners involved in this ceremony. And of course they tend to be men in drag who just wail around and dance for comic effect as you would. I'm showing you some of these streets and if you continue it up this way, you'll find lots and lots of cafes and bars, again, servicing this whole area. Again, this area's got lots and lots of uh, apartment complexes. So if you're 
going to rent an apartment and you might find you're ending up here. And of course a lot of people own them up here too. Well, I've got a little direction I've got in mind here. There's a nice little cafe, little German cafe that overlooks the sea. This is where we're going to bring our walk to a close. Don't go yet because we've got a little while yet. We're not there. Stay with us. You haven't seen the big finale. This is what you've been waiting for. These have got lovely views, haven't they? I'm not going to show you the main view yet. So that'd be teasing. But there is a big drop, by the way. It's a huge drop. Sometimes you'll see cats sing on the wall here with a horrendous drop down to the side. Cats don't seem to bother with heights, do they really? Quite impressed with cats overall. So it hasn't taken us long to get up here, has it really? You've stayed the course. For all that you who have, I'm going to elevate you into the bronze membership. Absolutely. Consider yourself bronze members. If you want to become a silver member, then in the comments below, if you want to put in any seven digit number. And if it's the number that I'm thinking of, what you're going to get is you're going to get a lifetime subscription to all our videos. Wow, fantastic. So remember, seven digit number if it's the one that i'm thinking of you get the big prize the big kahuna lifetime membership you get to see all our videos when they come out on youtube on the day well, it's very teasing isn't it because right now i'm looking over the edge here and i can see beautiful puerto de la cruz all you can see is this little walkway. So you can follow this walkway quite far along. And again, uh, you'll have to look it up in the guidebook or something, but you could follow this walkway and eventually you'll come to a, there will be a, a route that you can take that takes you up into banana plantations. It's a bit of a hike, but then, you know, you're sturdy folk. But for now, stopping at this little cafe as I am, let me reveal to you Puerto de la Cruz. As I said before, if you haven't been here before, get yourself over here. Okay, it's only 45 minutes or an hour from, from the south. Look what you're missing. It's 24 degrees. Oh, look, there's um, paragliders over there, jumping off the mountain. It's a beautiful breeze. You can swim, you can surf. But it's green, it's lush, it's cool, it's not dry, it's not arid, it's not all those things. So, wonderful that you've stayed with us. I have to say, you especially that have stayed this far are our new favourite subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, well, good for you. You know what? You don't have to. I'm not going to ask for your subscription. But, you know, if you want to know when the next one comes up, it's the only way you're going to know. And with that, I'm signing off. I'm going to go and sit by the pool. And I might even go to Laura Park. Who knows? The world's my oyster. And it could be yours too. Take care. Got to see you again. I've got that feeling. Not that one. The other feeling. Adios. Hasta luego. Chao.